terminally ill adults end of life bill. Second reading what day? Friday the 29th of November. Friday the 29th of November. An historic moment that could lead to one of the most significant changes in British society. Assisted dying is a hugely contentious and emotive issue that polarises opinion. Its opponents are fearful about the slippery slope of an ever-widening criteria. But the MP who introduced the bill told me safeguards will be in place. The first criteria is this is about terminally ill people. It's not about people who are going to get better. My proposal would probably be, and this is to be finalised in the coming weeks, two medical professions would have to sign this off. It will then have to go to a judge. So there's layers of safeguards and protections along the way. Kim Ledbetter accepts there are valid concerns about a hospice sector in crisis and a broken palliative care system. Hey, Tim. Tim was given just a few months to live. That was three and a half years ago. Oh, wow. Born with learning disabilities, he later developed cancer and it kept returning. Will you be there? Hello, Tim. It's lovely to see you. But despite being very sick, Tim can live at home with mum Valerie because of support from his palliative care nurse, Phoebe. This is, this is Jo. It's really sad to see him deteriorate particularly because when I first started seeing him, you know, he was independently mobile in his wheelchair, he would take lots of videos, he'd be super, super chatty. I'm not going to lie, I do cry quite a lot at work. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're a human. Which flavour would you like? Valerie is 82, like? and naturally, she's worried about the future. Would you be able to cope without the palliative care you receive? I couldn't do this without them. I could ring St Christopher's at any time. And that, I mean, they keep such wonderful notes so that whoever answers the phone knows everything. St Christopher's Hospice neither supports or opposes a change in the law. But the hospice sector is a strong and important voice in that debate. Linda has experienced the best and worst of end-of-life care. Her mother died peacefully and comfortably at a Marie Curie hospice. But her aunt, Mary, chose to die at home. We had to buy her incontinence pads. Um, we had to buy different creams because the deliveries weren't regular. We had to chase everyone for everything. Um, and it's just so tiring all the time having to fight. In the UK, we don't talk about death enough. But now, that conversation is being forced on us. And it could be one of the most important ones we ever have in our lives. Ashish Joshi, Sky News.